Today on Ask Miyazaki, we talk about using social media without an advertising strategy, the top tip for new social media managers, and the real battle between the ideal of finding your amazing dream job and the reality of taking whatever job will help you pay the bills. Paula asks, how is social media involved in the brand development of companies with no advertising strategy? I really like this question because it's an unfortunate reality in so many small, medium, and even large organizations. These companies have neither a clear marketing strategy nor a clear advertising strategy. And then they feel compelled to get into the social media arena and start pushing content that doesn't fulfill whatever key performance indicators they may have as a company. The result is almost always the same. Social media strategies and tactics begin to evolve as though they have a role in the organization that is not inherently connected to the marketing, communications, advertising, sales, or customer service functions. Eventually, social media becomes disrespected by the top management of the organization because it doesn't help to promote the organization's objectives. Alternatively, social media becomes intertwined with only one or a few of the other business functions and loses the opportunity to be a means to connect across marketing, communication, advertising, sales, and the customer experience. As far as brand and brand development, the brand ends up not being developed well because no strategy existed prior to the involvement of social media as the incredible tool that it is. But this can be fixed by first establishing clear strategies and key performance indicators for the various business functions, and then by welcoming social media as a set of channels that will help the business to reach its goals. Aixa asks, what is your top tip for starting social media managers who are trying to attract attention to a brand? Often new social media managers are given the task to build awareness or attract attention or create buzz around the brand. Unfortunately, just as often, they're asked to do this by using the power of social media, which seems to be a way of saying, yeah, we want you to do this with no budget and no people. And this would be fine if for some reason you were, say, a, a psychic who could predict what the next big social media viral video or tweet would be and then leverage that to create the amazing attention that upper management desires for such a low cost. The reality, however, is that building awareness on social media is something that either takes time, people, and or, dare I say it, money. If you are not going to spend on social media advertising, then you need the people power and the time to build connections and provide value to your various target audiences. You start this task by identifying the business, marketing, and communication goals of the organization, and then deciding which of your target audiences will be amenable to building relationships via social media. Then, it's developing a focused content strategy, getting the content in front of your audiences, and connecting with them via two-way interactions. At that point, attracting attention to the brand will be the rational result from building the social media structure that connects with audiences and supports business goals. Megan asks, do you think it's more important to search for the kind of job you want or choose any job to gain experience and hope you eventually find what you're looking for? This is such an intriguingly practical question, Megan, and one that's relevant to every one of us at some point in our lives. But at the same time that it's practical, it's also idealistic, which actually makes it even more intriguing. The harsh reality part of job search is that if you need money, you need a job. And you may not be able to be too picky with which job you take. If it pays and you're relatively satisfied with it in the short term, you might feel compelled to accept it while you can and start the paychecks flowing. On the other hand, there are those perfect jobs out there somewhere that will give you precisely the training and environment and, and leadership and mentoring you need to move you to the next level in your desired career progression. 
The problem is that these jobs are extremely hard to find. So let's talk about the situation that the vast majority of people will likely be experiencing. What I'm going to say right now is especially relevant to younger people, although it really can apply to anyone who still plans to be working four or five years from now. Most likely, you currently are not in your dream job. And most likely, your next job will not be your dream job. But because you have to work, let's consider what you can do to change your current or potential mediocre job into the almost perfect stepping stone to prepare you to land your dream job. Three things to consider. First, be cautious about the idea that any job in your desired field is worthwhile, even if it's menial and has no room for advancement or meaningful learning or exposure. A job with no opportunity for learning or exposure should be avoided at all costs. Instead, it would be better to work in an entirely different field and have a job that allows you to learn transferable skills like leadership, analytics, tech skills, and or demonstrate your universal values such as integrity, dedication, leadership, creativity, etc. So, choose your mediocre job wisely. Second, create opportunities within your current job that will help you to grow. Volunteer for additional assignments if they'll give you the, the experience you're looking for. Brainstorm ideas on how you can help your boss and the company as a whole to be more successful. Think of projects that will help you to learn to be seen and or to demonstrate, to be able to demonstrate your values. I think these as, I think of these as high opportunity projects. When it comes to writing about this job on your resume and LinkedIn, you'll be discussing these much more than your probably boring and commonplace regular job duties. Finally, be dedicated to performing extremely well in the mediocre duties of your current job. You will not be chosen to do those high opportunity projects if your primary duties are not being accomplished well. Too many people think that if they do some extra job well, their supervisor will forgive the fact that they haven't done the job that they were hired to do. Going the extra mile means that you have to go the initial distance first. Always get your primary work done. And if that means you need to treat your opportunity projects as a side job, then do it, even if you're not getting paid any extra money for that particular side job. The key is to create not only your own opportunity projects, but to create the opportunity to be allowed to perform them on behalf of the organization. Follow these three steps, and I guarantee that you'll be closer to your dream job in terms of your experience, your skills, and your network of connections. That's all for today. Thank you very much for the questions. I always appreciate them. If you have a question about digital marketing, personal branding, social media, marketing analytics, or anything related, Tweet it using the hashtag AskMiyazaki. If you have not already subscribed, be sure to subscribe to this channel so that you can be notified of future installments of Ask Miyazaki, Monday's Marketing Minute, or whatever else comes your way. And have a great day.